Oh, the the whole river. It's 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 a challenging, exciting, dramatic, historical, fascinating thing. Down a wild canyons and mountains she flew. Canadian Northwest to the ocean so blue. It's a roll on Columbia Road. The people talk about it all the time. What's happening to the river? Damn, it's a limited resource. And there's not enough water to satisfy everybody. The fact of building Cooley Dam was kind of a dream in itself. And the salmon are unable to go all the way up the river like they used to. The last free-flowing portion of the Columbia River. And they flooded, I'll have to look for wherever the beaver go. The whole world and the people and everybody has to have to progress. Therefore, we got to have dams and certainly power. Other great rivers add power to you. Yakima, Snake, and the Klickitatu. Sandy Willamette and the Hood River, too. It's a roll on, Columbia, roll on. Well, I'm a Columbia River bar pilot. The Columbia River bar pilots are a, an association of ex-steamship masters who have uh, come ashore and we guide vessels over the Columbia River Bar in and out of the Columbia River. The Columbia River Bar pilot boards a vessel 18 miles out from Astoria and we have a small boat there. The Columbia River Bar is probably the most dangerous bar in the world. It's called the Graveyard of the Pacific. The mouth of the river is an opening. All of that ocean water is trying to get into the river. The river itself is trying to get out. We'll build up seas in the wintertime with huge breakers, and you start thinking of five-story buildings uh, in height, and that's about what that looks like. Once in a while, I in a storm or something, and I remember my mother always wanted me to be a plumber, and I wondered why I didn't. And the ladder sometimes swings out 10 or 15 feet from the side of the vessel, and then it swings back in and bangs into it. We had four pilots break their legs during the winter. Life gotten a little wet twice. So I flipped off the ladder and did a loop in the air and came down between the size ship and the pilot boat and they managed to fish me out of the water. But it's all part of the business. There have been uh, a number of tragedies here on the bar in the early days with the sailing vessels when there wasn't power to get across the bar and about a thousand lives have been lost here. I can imagine that Lewis and Clark took one look at this place with the wind and the rain and said Lordy, why in the hell did we come to a desolate place like this? Ocean in view. Oh, the joy. The waves appear to break with tremendous force in every direction. Quite across a large sandbar flies within the mouth. Every man as wet as water could make them all the last night and today all day as the rain continued. The Columbia has many, many uses. It's recreation, it's commercial navigation, uh, it is irrigation, it is power, and it's the largest hydroelectric producer in the world. When one proceeds up the Columbia River, you pass through the Columbia River Gorge where the river passes through the Cascade Mountains and it's just beautiful up in through there. I see the flower of all water above and below me, the never receding moving, unmoving in a parched land white in the moonlight, the soul at a still stand. Delighting in surface change, the glitter of light on waves, and I roam elsewhere, my body thinking, turning toward the other side of light, in a tower of wind, a tree idling in air, beyond my own echo, neither forward nor backward, unperplexed, in a place leading nowhere. They build reactors so that they could get plutonium so they could build a bomb. 
I know that some of the effluents did discharge certain amounts of contamination into the river, but that's not the case anymore. I've been a reactor operator. I've worked in, in the biology part of it on the river. Washington Public Power, they're building two reactors right now. I guess I like nuclear energy. I would hope to see more reactors and dams. What gets me, the Corps of Engineers, uh, and I think the Corps is trying to clean up their act, but they'll come in and they'll wipe out 40 miles of beautiful river habitat where there's fishing and boating, you know, and everything that you really want, see? And then they give you a little park. Seems like every time we build a new dam, who's the first one to squat down there? A big aluminum outfit. Here's the dam here, boom, bam, here they are, right there. You're really crying the blues, but you don't have enough power. And at the same time, you're perfectly willing to bring someone in that's going to gobble it up. <laughs> Anytime you got a dam, they're going to fluctuate the water. I don't know, but I understand that there's going to be some fluctuations with more powerhouses put on the river. But they're talking about 20-some feet or 25, and that is just unreal. That's vertical. I wonder sometimes how many people are going to drown. I mean, if they want to talk about it that way, they better put about a 20-foot fence all the way from the mouth, clear on up to the... I'm in places, I'm really serious. I just, I just think it's a crime to think about damming all of the Columbia River. We've got most of it dammed now, and I think we should just leave this stretch. I, I really do. Um, I take it pretty personal. I just soon maybe lay one on them, I suppose. I just, I don't want no one fooling with the river. I haven't heard that any of that waste that had leaked out from those storage tanks got down into the groundwater and went into the river. But uh, I don't know how long they're going to have to watch this atomic waste. Is it 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, whatever? You know, I mean, how long did Rome last? Let people watch it as long as our civilization goes on or what? I don't, I don't know. But I know they're going to work it out. I've worked around it, you know, so I'm not saying I'm not careful with it. You know? But I mean, it doesn't, I'm not bothered. I'm really not. Forget the earth, those images and lies. They said there'd be no wind out here, but something blows from star to star to clean our eyes and touch our hair. 